Hi, I'm Brian London of Gold Newsletter, and this is your Market One Minute. I'm here with Joe Campbell of TerraX Minerals, and, and Joe, you have a very interesting story with TerraX. It, it seems like a lot of the discoveries that we're seeing these days in the, uh, the resource market are actually rediscoveries of, of projects that were either uh, abandoned at lower metals prices or ran into other troubles and are just eminently viable at today's metals prices. And, and you really, uh, I don't know if it was lucked into or good fortune or just, just great planning and execution, you've just got a gem of a project in the Yellowknife Gold District. Could you tell us a bit more about it? That's right. Uh, the, the Yellowknife District is one of the, the six major Archean low gold areas. Um, we had recognized it was an area that had been ignored for a while. The two mines had shut down in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. uh, an opportunity came up when another company, as you suggested, uh, went bankrupt and uh, it was up for uh, receivership. Mm -hmm. uh, we looked at what assets they had. This project was by far the best one. Uh, we put a bid in for it and, and we're, we're lucky enough to uh, acquire it. Shortly after getting the project, uh, we again uh, went to the site and found uh, evidence, uh, records of hundreds of drill holes that were drilled on the property, many of them with very high grades in them. Uh, and there was a deposit on the depo uh, property with over 200 drill holes. So as you suggested, it really is a rediscovery of, of uh, information that was there with deposits uh, ready to move. And a legendary mine, the giant mine in, in uh, Yellowknife, and, and you actually had perfectly preserved drill core from these hundreds of holes sitting at the property behind padlocks and well maintained and, and, and a lot of your so-called exploration of the last couple of years has actually been reassaying previous drill holes, right? That's right. Uh, when we went there last, the summer of uh, 2013, we discovered almost 200 drill holes from our property uh, that was in the giant uh, core yard. Um, we were able to extract that core into our own facility, began relogging and resampling it. I got very high values out of many of the holes. So not only was it a, a boon for us to get this information, but it allowed us to move to uh, immediately target specific areas to expand uh, known deposits that were on the property. And that's what you're doing right now. I mean, you, you spent a lot of time reassaying this drill core, great savings. I imagine it's many millions of dollars of drilling you did have to do. And, uh, and now you're actually doing your own drilling and, and bringing uh, new results to the market and expanding zones that were left behind. That's correct. Uh, some of the original or first holes that we drilled this past winter uh, we were drilling into the areas where the, the previous drilling had been done. Uh, we were getting assay results of uh, multi-gram over multi-meters. Uh, we actually drilled a, a, a drill hole on what's called our Barney structure, which is the extension of the old mines. Mm -hmm. And we had a 22-meter intersection of 6.35 grams, wow. uh, just a very good hole to, to pull on a structure that we know has already hosted 14 million ounces. And this is mineralization that they left behind because even at that grade, it was too low a grade for them back then. Huh? That's right. In the old days, those mines were running uh, these deposits at 10 gram, wow. even 20 gram cutoffs uh, wow. for the material that they were putting through their mill. So these zones that we're finding now uh, even within those zones are very high grade, we're still getting uh, 15 to 20 gram intersections over mineable whiz, which is what they would have mined. Right. But we're looking at a much broader zone of mineralization because at today's prices, they're very still rich. They're very, very rich. rich yeah. by today's standards. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about your, the advantages you have here in terms of infrastructure, it being a previously or previously operated mine and, and a mining culture in the area. That's right. Uh, the um, Yellowknife area, Yellowknife is the capital of the Northwest mm -hmm. Territories. When I talk to people about having a northern project, everybody thinks of uh, helicopters and, and positioning fuel and setting up field camps. In our case, we can drive from the city of Yellowknife right onto the property. Mm -hmm. We don't have any camps. We, we live in accommodation in the city. All of our contractors and services come out of the city. Mm -hmm. It's still a mining town. They mm -hmm. still service the diamond mines and the gold exploration to the north. Mm -hmm. um, it's 
uh, an area that has a lot of government support for the projects that we're putting forward. They want to see activity in Yellowknife. Uh, and we're also very well tied in with the First Nations and mm -hmm. keeping them informed of what we're doing and they've been very supportive of what's going on there. So we have roads, we have the airport, we have power, a hydropower, a dam is actually right on our property. It's called the Bluefish Hydropower Dam. Uh, so we have much more infrastructure uh, mm -hmm. capabilities for this project than a typical northern one. I know the, uh, the market has been very excited about some of the drill results you've been getting and, and some of the reassaying. Tell us uh, a bit about your plans going forward. Well, we have uh, structures now that we've been able to follow on surface uh, for kilometers. Uh, the best one that's been drilled, uh, to, or the best extent of drilling, is at what's called the Crestorum. Mm -hmm. There's about 200 historical holes into it, but they only drilled that for about 1.4 kilometers of strike and only down to about 100 meters depth. Uh, typically, these mines have gone to uh, thousands of meters of depth. And so there's a huge potential on just that one structure. And that is still not our priority structure. We want to concentrate on the Barney, which is the extension of the old mines. So really, it's a challenge to prioritize you. It's such a target-rich environment. That's right. But what we're going to do is go in, and we've got we can expand both the Barney and the Castorum. So that's the intention of the drilling that we're going to start up uh, in January of, of 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, go in and and increase the strike length and increase the dip length on these uh, these deposits. Well, great. Uh, Joe, thanks so much for, for uh, sharing your thoughts with us and your plans. It's very exciting and lots of good news ahead then. Yes, there is. Great. Thanks, Joe.